Del Santo made four non-horror movies in 1966. After taking 1967 and most of 1968 off, Santo returned to the Churubusco Studios in September 1968 to film El Tesoro de Dracula for Cinematográfica Calderón. El Tesoro de Dracula was scripted by Alfredo Salazar, Abel Salazar's younger brother. Alfredo Salazar had been associated with fantasy cinema since 1954 when he wrote the screen story for La Bruja. Salazar scripted numerous fantasy films during his career, in addition to westerns, melodramas, and comedies. A notorious recycler, Salazar's script for El Tesoro de Dracula melds elements of Bram Stoker's original novel, the 1931 Universal film, and plots from El Mundo de los Vampiros and Las Luchadoras contra la Momia, as well as a touch of science fiction inspired by television's The Time Tunnel. Unfortunately, the film's half-hour-long flashback sequence largely based on Dracula, does not feature either El Santo or his ancestor, as some other Santo movies do. While this section of the film is in some ways more interesting than the contemporary scenes, the absence of El Santo is a negative. El Tesoro de Dracula was directed by René Cardona Sr. Cardona, born in Cuba in 1905, was a prolific actor, producer, and director. He already had a long history with the Silver Masked Man. In 1952, Cardona directed El Enmascarado de Plata, a Santo film without El Santo. In 1961, Santo vs. El Rey del Crimen, directed by Federico Curiel, Cardona played El Santo's father. He would go on to direct or co-direct nine Santo movies, the most of any director. And make many other genre efforts, including the Wrestling Women series and cult films like La Mujer Murcielago and the movie best known as Night of the Bloody Apes. The role of Dracula was played by yet another immigrant to Mexico, Aldo Monti. Monti, born in Italy in 1929, moved to Venezuela and appeared in movies and TV there before relocating to Mexico in the 1950s. Unlike Herman Robles and Guillermo Murai, the handsome Monti was well known to Mexican audiences before he put on the vampire cape. Monty would play Dracula again in Santo y Blue Demon vs. Dracula y el Hombre Lobo, and even directed a Santo film, Anonimo Mortal. Also in the cast was Carlos Agosti, the vampiric Count Frankenhausen from El Vampiro Sangriento and La Invasión de los Vampiros, here playing a non-supernatural subsidiary villain. Future comic star Alberto Caballo Rojas is featured as Santo's comedic sidekick. El Tesoro de Dracula premiered in Mexico City in July 1969. It proved to be one of El Santo's most successful films to that date, opening on a dozen screens in the capital and being held over for a month. It was also exhibited internationally, in some cases with Santo's presence downplayed in favor of the Dracula aspect. But some international audiences didn't see El Tesoro de Dracula. They saw an alternate version entitled El Vampiro y el Sexo, containing alternate takes and additional footage featuring nude actresses in the clutches of Dracula, El Vampiro y el Sexo was screened in the United States and elsewhere for adult audiences, but went unseen in Mexico for many decades. Filmmaker Viviana Garcia Besne unearthed the print of El Vampiro y el Sexo while making her 2009 documentary Perdida about the Calderon filmmaking dynasty. 
After considerable controversy, the infamous and long-sought nude version of El Tesoro de Dracula was finally shown publicly in Mexico in 2011. However, El Vampiro y el Sexo wasn't the last time El Santo would encounter vampires, or scantily clad women for that matter. Producciones Sotomayor originated the Mexican multi-monster movie with El Castillo de los Monstruos in 1957, featuring reasonable approximations of classic Universal Pictures monsters, then gave the theme a science fiction twist in 1959's La Nave de los Monstruos. A decade later, the company combined their two monster rosters for Santo y Blue Demon contra los Monstruos. The masked heroes confronted a mad scientist, his little person assistant, a Frankensteinish monster, male and female vampires, a large scaly cyclops, a werewolf, a mummy, and some green-faced wrestler zombies. The diminutive alien with the exposed brain from La Nave de los Monstros is also there, but the light has gone out of his eyes. In an interview late in life with Jose Javier Navar, El Santo specifically alluded to this movie when discussing the problem of casting non-wrestlers in his films. Manuel Leal, later to become masked wrestler Tinieblas, plays the Frankenstein's monster. And both Vicente Lara and Gerardo Zepeda, the werewolf and cyclops respectively, were former grapplers. But El Santo had some issues with the films Vampire and Mummy respectively. I made three films with Sotomayor and one of them I liked a lot, Santo y Blue Demon vs. Los Monstros. There are certain types who didn't fit. There's Dracula, a little fellow, and the mummy, a poor little skinny guy. The majority of the monsters I was fighting are wrestlers. If I fight with an actor, he's afraid of falling and he's right, he's an actor and might get hurt. A wrestler, no. Although as these shots show, the mummy was doubled in the action scenes by a more durable performer. The vampire has fangs, a pasty face, and nicely done bat ears, and slightly resembles Max Schreck as Nosferatu. He may also have inspired the look of future tabloid star Batboy. Santo and Blue Demon shot three feature films for Sotomayor at the Churubusco Studios in January, February, and March 1969. Santo contra Blue Demon and La Atlantida, Santo y Blue Demon contra los Monstruos, and El Mundo de los Muertos, each film made in about two weeks with a two-week break between each project. Julian Soler directed the first, while veteran Gilberto Martinez Solares helmed the latter two. All three were shot by Gilberto's brother, Raul Martinez Solares. Experienced Santo scriptor Rafael Garcia Travesi wrote all three films with a co-story vanity credit for producer Jesus Sotomayor Martinez. As was the company's want, Sotomayor included stock footage from other movies in each of these films. In the case of Santo y Blue Demon contra los Monstruos, it's a musical number by Adalberto Martinez Resortes from their 1957 film Yo Quiero Ser Artista. Santo y Blue Demon contra los Monstruos utilizes the familiar Mad Scientist Revives Various Monsters to Conquer the World plot. Each of the main monsters gets a bit of individual action, and all participate in a couple of mob free-for-alls. But only the three vampires get their comeuppance on screen. Santo stakes the Vampire Man, Blue Demon, and Otto Halder stake one Vampire Woman each while the other creatures perish ignominiously off-screen as the Mad Doctor's lab burns and explodes. If anything, the vampires have a bit more screen time than their associates. In one scene, a vampire woman lures Santo into a trap by asking him for a ride home, a scene lifted almost verbatim from Attack in Las Brujas but flashes her fangs and calls in monster reinforcements when Santo fails to fall for her trick. 
In fact, in the export version of Santo y Blue Demon vs. Los Monstros, it appears the vampire woman flashed more than just her fangs. Publicity stills from an alternate version of the movie indicate El Santo was no longer averse to appearing in the same scene as nude performers. In fact, one still shows him in bed with a topless Hedy Blue who plays his girlfriend in the film. Unfortunately, this version of the film has not surfaced so far. Santo y Blue Demon contra los Monstruos opened in Mexico City in May 1970 in 11 cinemas and played for six weeks in its initial run, a record for a Santo film to that time. It was only surpassed by Las Momias de Guanajuato, which ran for nine weeks in 1972. So it wasn't long before Santo was pitted against vampires on screen once again. A year after filming Santo y Blue Demon vs. Los Monstruos, El Santo was back at the Churubusco Studios for another round with the undead. La Venganza de las Mujeres Vampiro was not, as one might expect, a sequel to Santo vs. Las Mujeres Vampiro, although the producers probably wouldn't have minded if potential audiences thought it was. Vampire specialist Federico Curiel, director of Los Vampiros and numerous other genre movies, was hired to helm the script written by Fernando Osez and Jorge Garcia Besné, who had been associated since Santo's first two Cuban movies. Jose Ortiz Ramos returned from Santo vs. Las Mujeres Vampiro as the director of photography, although this time he was shooting in color rather than black and white. Aldo Monti was back from El Tesoro de Dracula, but this time he was cast as a police inspector who helps El Santo battle a plague of vampires. Although at first, he's skeptical. Pero lo importante es saber quién fue el asesino. Yo lo sé, teniente. Un vampiro. ¿Un vampiro? ¡Ay, qué romántico! Morir en brazos del conde Drácula. Interesante, guapo. No bromees, Patty. Y cuidado con publicarlo. Teniente, no hay que olvidar las pequeñas incisiones que presenta la víctima en el cuello. Además, los vampiros y el vampirismo son absolutamente reales que se conocen desde tiempos muy lejanos y se han comprobado una y mil veces. Todo eso no son sino supersticiones. Gracias a la ciencia moderna y a la difusión más amplia de los conocimientos, han sido desterradas de las mentes cultas. Sin embargo, hay una cosa que la ciencia no ha hecho. Ocuparse de los muertos. A la ciencia le interesa únicamente el hombre mientras vive. Después de muerto, ya no es campo para la investigación. Y precisamente el vampiro empieza a existir Después de muerto. Norma Lazareno, the female lead in Night of the Bloody Apes and a veteran of numerous films of all genres, played the spunky heroine, a newspaper reporter out to get the big scoop, even if it requires dressing up like a hippie chick. The lead vampire role of Countess Myra went to Cuban-born actress Gina Romand who had the female lead in El Santo's second movie, Hombres Infernales, shot in her homeland, and also in the wacky Vergara Santo film, Profanadores de Tumbas. Now, however, she was the villain, and would be back to threaten El Santo in the title role of La Hija de Frankenstein, Frankenstein's daughter, in 1971. La Venganza de las Mujeres Vampiro, like many Mexican vampire films of the 1960s and beyond, mixes science fiction with horror. Vampire Countess Myra is revived by mad scientist Dr. Brankov for reasons unclear. She immediately starts recruiting a new band of vampire followers so she can get revenge on El Santo, whose ancestor apparently put a stake in her heart years ago and wiped out her followers. Federico Curiel, who has a cameo role in the movie himself, puts the film together slickly, and this is one of the better El Santo films overall. 
The milieu of hippies, pop art, and go-go dancers is amusing, and the cast and performances are entertaining. Myra assembles a decent-sized group of subsidiary vampires who are burned in their coffins at the climax in a scene extremely reminiscent of Santo vs. Las Mujeres Vampiro. Although no prints or even photographs have yet emerged to confirm it, contemporary press accounts indicate La Venganza de las Mujeres Vampiro was yet another Santo movie containing nude scenes for export. However, it was the general audience's rated version that premiered in Mexico on Christmas Eve 1970. El Santo's last cinematic clash with vampires was one of his best, Santo y Blue Demon vs. Dracula y el Hombre Lobo. El Santo co-produced the film with Cinematográfica Calderón and Alfredo Salazar turned in another effective, if overly familiar, screenplay. This time, in addition to borrowing from El Mundo de los Vampiros, including the stake pit demise of the vampire, he also included a gory vampire resurrection scene inspired by Hammer's Dracula, Prince of Darkness. When shooting started in May 1972, director Miguel M. Delgado was behind the camera. Delgado, best known as the house director for famed comedian Cantinflas for nearly 40 years, maintained a rigorous schedule of work on other films as well. He had previously directed Santo vs. La Hija de Frankenstein and would helm two more Santo movies after this one. But his introduction to fantasy cinema had come much earlier with 1958's excellent Mysterios de la Magia Negra, which coincidentally starred Aldo Monti. Santo and Blue Demon were reunited for the first time since their hit Las Momias de Guanajuato, and Aldo Monti returned to the role of Count Dracula. Dracula's hirsute companion, Rufus Rex the Wolfman, was played by the son of cinematographer Agustin Martinez Solares. Agustin Martinez Solares Jr. was a handsome young actor who had a brief but prolific career in this era. Santo's girlfriend in Santo y Blue Demon vs. Dracula y el Hombre Lobo was played by the very cute ingenue Nubia Marti, who would team up again with the silver masked superhero in Santo vs. Las Lobas. Marty's character is quite assertive and energetic in Santo y Blue Demon vs. Dracula y el Hombre Lobo, actively assisting Santo in his battle against the forces of evil. There is plenty to like in this one. Dracula, the Wolfman, a bunch of other Wolfmen, several vampire women, an evil hunchback, and two masked wrestlers. Santo y Blue Demon vs. Dracula y el Hombre Lobo proved a fitting climax to El Santo's decade-long battle against the undead. Although he would continue to make movies until the early 1980s, El Santo never met another vampire, possibly because he had destroyed them all. Thank <laughs> you.